So Blackmagic just released DaVinci Resolve 19 and this update is jam-packed with a lot of new tools, effects, features and overall quality of life improvements. And instead of going over every single thing that is new in DaVinci Resolve 19, I'm going to show you my top 5 new additions or new things that you can do in DaVinci Resolve 19. But first we have to do a little bit of housekeeping. DaVinci Resolve 19 is still an open beta, which means that we might experience a couple hiccups here and there or a few crashes. Haven't had that happen to me in the few hours that I've used it so far, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen or that it's gonna happen at all during the open beta. And if you decide to upgrade to DaVinci Resolve 19 open beta, just make sure that you're gonna back up your project databases and I do not recommend to update when you still have an edit going on currently. But that's it, here are my top five new features of DaVinci Resolve 19. No more audio ducking in the Fairlight page because now you can do audio ducking right on the edit page. And you have to do that on a track level basis. So that means you have to have one specific track or more specific tracks that are just your music. In this case, it's audio track number two because audio track number one is gonna be my voiceover. And on audio track number two, I'm just gonna select the track itself. And then under the audio tab, you have a bunch of track level adjustment. In this case, I'm gonna activate the ducker. The source is gonna be audio one because that is my voiceover. And then I'm gonna increase the duck level just a bit, that is the level of reduction. In this case, I'm gonna to go to around 13, but I also wanna reduce the loudness of the music track itself to roughly around minus six dB. Now, if you watch closely to the mixer down here, you can see that the music is loud when there's no talking in the beginning, but once my voice kicks in, the music will be reduced. Huge update that will save me personally a lot of time. If you think about your typical music subscription services like Track Club, Audio or Epidemic Sound, they all let you download the individual stems of a music track. However, if you think about Artlist, they don't allow you to do so, but that is not an issue anymore. Gonna use the Music Remixer. The Music Remixer also works on a track level basis, but it allows you to fully customize the volume of each different instrument or the vocals. For example, you could up the vocals by a few decibels, you could reduce the drums by a few decibels, you could increase the bass, increase the guitar, or and decrease the others. But you could also solo different instruments by muting every other instrument. For example, if I just wanna have the drums, I'm just gonna mute every other instrument so I just have the drums. If I wanna build this into real different stems, what I have to do is, in this case, I just have the drums right here on my audio track number two. I'm gonna duplicate that to audio track number three. Again, go to the track level basis. I'm gonna go to Music Remixer. And then here, I just wanna have the vocals, so I'm gonna mute everything else. Now, if you wanna have the console, you can hit this button right here, and it brings up the console that I had just a few seconds ago. So now I have just the vocals on audio track number three and I have just the drums on audio track number two. Hey, sorry for the abrupt interruption, but this might be really important for you. If by any chance you would wanna win this camera right here, that's the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II or a 14 inch M3 MacBook or a DJI RS Pro combo or any of the other amazing prices totaling in over $22,000 in value, then you should pay very close attention for the next few seconds. Because Motion VFX is hosting their annual editing contest. Starting April 8th, you will have four weeks to craft your personal showreel, but please follow these steps to be eligible to win any of those amazing prizes. First of all, post a video until the end of May 7th across your social media channels, which include Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, any other social media platform. Secondly, you have to use the hashtag mshowreelchallenge in the title of the video. Also, you have to include a link to the challenge into the post as well as tag motion VFX. And once you've done all of that, just head to the website and submit the form that you find there and the winners will be announced by May 14. Plus, there's a bonus, as they always do, they're giving away a pack for free that is specifically designed for this contest and you will find a link to that in the description below this video. But you better make those cuts quickly as you only have four weeks until the end of May 7, 2024, but I believe in you, you got this, and thank you Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. 
color grading on the edit page by just using the film look creator which you can find our effects then open effects and then just search for film look creator and just drag that on a single clip or drag it onto an adjustment clip and stretch it out over multiple clips now by default you have a couple different presets like 65 millimeter 35 cinematic bleach bypass nostalgic default no effects and custom however the most exciting thing is that you have a color space transform built into this effect now if i'm going to select color space overrides because this is shot in a log profile i can choose my input color space which was white gamut 4 and input gamma which was log c4 output color space is going to be rec 709 output gamma is going to be rec 709a just like that now under color settings i could change my exposure this is photometric exposure so that works really really good and then under split toning you can enable split toning you can increase the amount and change the pivot then you have a bunch of different effects like vignetting halation bloom grain flicker gate weave or film gate which is pretty exciting because if we enable this you have those like cinematic retro boxes so preset 35 millimeter you could use a super 16 you could choose a super 8 you could choose 2.4 to 1 or you can make your custom border and increase the padding just a little bit so that is a really really cool effect which i'm super stoked about just use the transform and let's just create a nice push in animation just like that and then just increase the zoom value uh, at around here and now you can choose the curve button down here and select each of those and just ease those keyframes in and you could create any curve that you like for example like shoot it up overshoot it and then go back like this so that's a huge update for me personally because I prefer using the transform effects compared to the transform that is built into your inspector and now being able to adjust the spline on any keyframes is just a massive massive plus I'm just going to demonstrate how powerful this tool is. For example, this sky in this shot looks a little bit too dull for my liking, so I want to give a little bit more life to that. First of all, I'm going to go to my blue six vector down here. See the selection that it has? That is okay. So I'm going to activate my highlight tool and I'm going to push the center around to see if I can include a little bit more of that sky. And that right here looks perfectly fine. Then you can shift the hue of just that sky around. For example, if you want to have it like pink, you could do so using the hue slider down here. Or you have two more sliders down here. The left one is going to be density. The right one is going to be saturation. I want to make the sky a lot more dense. So I'm just going to up that like so. And I want to bring in just a little bit more saturation like this. And if I'm going to activate that and deactivate that, you can see the massive difference that this has. Next I just want to bring in a little bit more richness into the grass right here in the foreground so I'm going to choose my yellow preset and activate my highlighting tool, shift around the center point to see if I can include just a little bit more and right there is perfect. So I'm going to deactivate the highlighter tool and I'm going to bring in a little bit more density but I'm also going to desaturate it just a little bit. Now, if I'm going to deactivate this node, you can see the massive difference that we've already made. However, the skin looks just a little bit too saturated. And this is where the skin six vector comes in. So I'm going to check my highlighter tool. Well, we could refine that a little bit. So I'm activating my highlighter and I'm going to shift the center around so I can just have the skin tones. Now that is perfect. And I'm going to reduce the saturation just a little bit, probably like so. And if I'm going to deactivate that and activate it, we have a very good image with just the color slice tool. So if you come over to your motion effects, under spatial noise reduction, under mode, you now have access to ultra noise reduction. And that basically lets AI analyze your shot and then sets the Illuma and Chroma values based off of that analysis. So I'm going to analyze that. So I have Luma 3.5 and Chroma 2.3. However, if I'm going to hit play right now, you can see that we're getting a maximum of three frames in playback. So keep that in mind because now I'm going to switch to enhanced 
and I'm going to set the exact values that the ultra noise reduction gave me. So I'm going to set Luma 3.5, I'm going to break the chain and I'm going to put in 2.3 on Chroma. And if I'm now going to hit play, you can see that we're getting massively improved playback speed, 16, 17 or 18 frames per second. Ultra noise reduction will slow down your computer a lot. But using it to get the values into the ballpark is actually pretty good and then using those values in the enhanced mode will actually improve the playback speed. So just keep that in mind. So big thanks for watching this video. Also, let me know in a comment below this video what was your most favorite new addition to DaVinci Resolve 19. And also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more future videos like that or more in-depth tutorials on any of those new effects or implementations of DaVinci Resolve 19. Otherwise, hope you're having a great day and I'm going to see you next time. Bye.